How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Boilai Hobby Time. I've been building a little town that fits into my wild imaginary western universe, and this week I expanded it once again with building number 6. I started by drawing out the floor plan on a piece of paperless foam core, transferred the measurements to a thin plank of balsa wood. I edited this footage to make it look way easier to cut the balsa wood than it actually is. In reality, to get a nice smooth cut, I ended up making about 10 passes per cut. Once I had all my wall sections cut out, I filed a few of the edges down at an angle to allow for a cleaner look and easier assembly later. To do that, I used a sanding stick. I also added some exaggerated grain back onto the balsa wood by scraping the surface with a wire brush. I also scored some panel lines with a little metal pick. I then glued the walls together and I glued the foam base down to the wooden base and I glued the walls down to the foam. Because this is a corner building, I wanted it to have a wraparound boardwalk and balcony. So I cut up some balcony sized strips of wood into an L shape, which didn't quite match the angle on the front of the building. So I cut a separate little wedge to fill that spot. Next, I measured out and added a little rail to support the balcony on the building side. Once those were cut out and fixed in place, I glued the balcony on permanently. Looking back, I probably should have added the boardwalk before the balcony, as this would have made the installation of the boardwalk easier, but you know what they say, hindsight is a dime a dozen. After cutting all those little boards out, I glued them in a row around the base of the building. I intentionally placed them unevenly to give the building a little bit more character. And speaking of character, I also added some trim pieces to break up the large flat areas as well as some false doors. Ouch. After impaling my foot with a little metal triangle, cut up some toothpicks and made them into support posts for the balcony. And speaking of support, I added a few beams and a post to hold up the roof. The last of the main details were to add some stairs and a landing to get from the balcony to the top of the building. At this point it was looking like a nice real life wild western building, but this needs to fit into the wild imaginary west. The idea for this building is a defense system that uses a hot air balloon tethered to the roof that can be lifted in the air and used as a surveillance tower or a heavy machine gun battery. The gunners can sit safely up in the air with a clear view of the whole town and pick off any potential invading monsters. I made the base of the landing pad for the balloon out of a styrene frame and some rail pieces that I mitered at a 45 degree angle to fit on the outside of the frame. I used plastic welds to bond everything together, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I spent way too much money on these styrene trusses, so I decided to use them in a way that would ensure their nice details would never be seen. Thinking about it, I actually do that quite often. I also added some little handrails using those same styrene pieces as before, and a piece of metal mesh to support the wooden beams on the landing pad. Once the landing pad was done, I glued it down to the roof, and I also added some steps and a little path for the people that operate the balloon. Then it was time to throw on some greeblies. I have multiple bits boxes with different tiers and categories of bits for various scales and themes, but the creme de la creme of my bits collection is in my bits bag. That's the bag on the left hand side of the screen there. It's where I throw the most interesting bits with good surface detail and high creative potential. I started the bits bag fairly recently, but it has become quite an important part of my workflow. The perfect part always seems to be there when I need it. If you like to build stuff like this and you don't have a creme de la creme bits box or bag, I'd recommend you start one. You'll probably enjoy it. I finished up the detailing on the building and it was time to move on to the balloon. I used the wings from a biplane model, 
cut those into four evenly sized pieces, and I added some surface detail using pieces from that same kit. Then glued them together with four corner pieces, and that was the walls of the basket. I used a piece of plastic canvas as a step ladder, and I framed the top of the basket with some square styrene. I also added some guns in place, and I added at least one to each side, so it's never overkill when it comes to monsters. I cut and bent a metal rod into two pieces that will be the uprights that will hold the basket to the balloon. For the balloon itself, I used this foam ball, which was about the right size. I added a little Advil lid to the bottom because I liked the shape of it. I decided to try out this foam safe super glue for the first time. I tested it on a small spot just to be sure that nothing would melt. I scored some lines in the foam that I hoped would show up later, but they ended up not being visible at all. I was able to take some measurements though, using those lines, to figure out how to cut the shape of the balloon pieces. I measured in half inch increments and transferred those measurements to a piece of paper, then I made a curve from those points, I folded the paper eight times, and I cut it like a paper snowflake. I say all that like I knew where I was going, but I was guessing the whole time. I then glued the paper to the foam ball with that foam safe super glue we were talking about earlier. I was decently happy with how it looked, reasonably like a hot air balloon, and then I got the bright idea to try and paper mache it. It ended up looking like a flesh covered light bulb or a gourd. In the end, I decided not to redo it because it adds character. In the olden days, Hot air balloons had a cool net that went over the top of the balloon that held the basket to the balloon. I didn't have any netting on hand, but I did have this mesh that I took from an air filter. I cut the mesh into a relative circle and I tied a string to six points spaced evenly around. I ran a metal rod through the basket and up into the balloon, fixing them together. I drilled a hole in the landing pad and I used it as a stand to hold the balloon while I tied the strings of this jellyfish hat onto the basket. After I had fixed the strings in place, I trimmed the excess as well as all the straggly ends of the mesh, and it was time to prime. I had a hard time deciding what to call this building, given that it wasn't really anything that a normal Wild Western town would have, but I remembered that I wanted the Pinkertons to be a main faction in this universe, so I decided that this building would be the Pinkerton headquarters for the county. At the end of the video, you'll see I paint the Pinkerton's eye emblem on the false front above the door. The Pinkertons are a private security force the town and surrounding towns pay for protective services. It seemed like a good deal at first given the dangers that exist in the West, but things have changed and people are becoming aware of the position that outsourcing their defenses has put them in. The Pinkertons were supposed to be a temporary service, but are now indefinite. They are now firmly planted in the politics of the town and have power and sway over decisions made by the town, both security related and more concerningly, non-security related. As you can imagine, this creates a lot of additional tension in an already tense environment. I wrapped up the painting on the balloon by painting the netting and the basket, and then I painted the sides of the diorama with black 3.0. The last things to do were to put the balloon in place and tie it down, put the people in their positions and put that eye emblem above the door. After that, I called it good. That is it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed 
This is my 100th video, which is hard to believe, but I have had so much fun doing this. Thank you all for following along. I appreciate you all very much. Huge shout out, as always, to my patrons for their continued support of this channel. You guys are the best. Have an awesome week, everyone. I'll see you next time.